Have you ever been at the point when you come around the calibration panel while editing your photos in Lightroom and you don't really know what to do with it? This is going to change now. We all have seen the calibration tool right at the end of all panels in Lightroom. I bet that some people move their sliders randomly until the photo uh, appears more to their liking. And other people are just ignoring the tool. But this is going to change after you've seen this video, because this tool actually has a deeper meaning and can be very powerful if used correctly. The calibration tool is a very powerful tool for us photographers, both from the color correction perspective and from the creative perspective. To understand what it really is, we need to do some color science first. As we all might know, a photo consists of three primary colors red, green and blue. All of the other colors come from combining at least two of these colors. So these three colors will determine how the taken photo will look like. If we had red and blue pixels, our image would appear purple. And if we had red, green and blue pixels generated, we would achieve a white or gray, depending on the value of these colors. They do not only generate the mixture of different colors, but also the amount of brightness and saturation in these specific colors. Now why should we calibrate these different colors? So what you need to understand is that there is no universal standard of what red, blue or green should look like. Different camera models convert the digital signal into the colors of your image in a slightly different way. Which is why Sony, Canon and Nikon all have their own unique look. So if you want to, let's say, get the Canon look but you're using a Sony camera, the calibration panel is there to help you out. But it can be used as much more than this. You can also create your own unique style while using the calibration tool and it's a powerful tool to fix your skin tones. So how does it work now? Let me show you how these different sliders affect our colors in the image. I have this image with our three primary colors and also the secondary colors which emerge when the primary colors are combined. When we now look at the HSL panel, for example, move the blue slider, we can see that it only affects the blue color in our image. The calibration tool works a little bit different since this changes every color in our image but in a different way. We have two sliders for each of these three colors controlling the hue and saturation of our colors, which are a value of those primary colors. Let's look at the hue slider for our red primary. When we move the slider, we can see how it affects our image. Every color is changing now, but mostly our red primary color. Same goes for the green and blue sliders. So as you can see, this tool is way different than our HSL panel in Lightroom, since this only affects one selected color. The slider above, named shadows, can be used to remove color cast in the dark areas of your image. If the shadows look a bit too green, you can drag the slider to the right to add more magenta and the other way around. Now let's see how it works when we use it on the photo. I just imported this photo I took on Kefalonia and I'm going to show you how I would edit it with the calibration panel. If you want to create a unique style for your photos, I recommend you to first try how changing the slider affects your image. This way you are able to understand what moving the sliders into different direction might do and gives you an understanding of how the colors in your image can change. What I always like to do is to drag the hue slider of our primary blue to the left to create some sort of teal and orange look which is very popular on Instagram. Also increasing the saturation of our blue slider makes our image pop without having it too much saturated. I hope this tutorial could help you to understand this powerful tool and encourage you to use it more often. If you enjoyed watching this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more videos about photography, videography and my own personal experience as a photographer. I will see you in the next video.